give people a few more minutes to join us. So we're just waiting to see if one more member will join us so that we have a quorum.
It looks like Representative O'Neill just joined us. Good, Good morning. morning. Sorry to keep you waiting, doing double duty. That's, that's okay, we understand. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this meeting to order. Welcome to this electronic meeting of the Government Oversight Committee. It's nice to see everybody. I know we had a long night, so thank you all for being here this morning. A few reminders before we get started. This meeting is being broadcast live and recorded on the Government Oversight's YouTube channel. The audio stream is also broadcast on the legislature's website. The legislature's audio stream is turned on at the scheduled start time for the meeting. The YouTube stream is turned on at or near the scheduled start time for the meeting and will remain on until the end of the meeting. If you're on the Zoom meeting platform and your camera or microphone are on, whatever you say or do can be seen and heard even during breaks. Please remember to mute yourself when you are not speaking. Please remember to turn off your video if you need to leave the room at any time. I'm a member who is participating from the committee room, so I'll need to use my laptop and my device microphone rather than the room microphone to speak, and I will leave the room microphones off. Written materials for this meeting have been mailed or distributed electronically to committee members and have been posted on the OPEGA website at the start of the meeting under the GOC meeting section. During the meeting, the OPEGA director and assigned staff may share documents on the screen, as they will do today. During the meeting, the chair will recognize committee members, staff, or others to participate. Members may get the attention of the chair by using the raise hand function in Zoom, raising or waving their physical hand on camera, or making a request in the chat. Please remember that the chat function in Zoom should not be used for any substantive discussions or committee business because it is not visible to the public. Please limit the use of chat to getting the attention of the chair or getting help with technical issues. OPEGA staff will be monitoring the chat for technical issues committee members may be experiencing and will respond via chat or will contact IT as needed. Finally, a reminder that members must be verifiable, verifiable through audio and video for any vote taken. And now we'll go ahead and introduce our committee members. I'm Representative Genevieve McDonald. I'm the House Chair of Government Oversight. Our Senate Co-Chair, Nate Libby, is unavailable to join us today. So alphabetically by chamber, Senator Bailey, if you could please go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, Madam Chair. I am Senator Donna Bailey, and I proudly serve the residents of Saco, Old Orchard Beach, Hollis, Wilmington, and part of Buxton. Thank you. And Senator Bennett? Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm Rick Bennett. I have the honor of serving 13 towns in Western Maine in the foothills and lakes region of the beautiful part of our state. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Dillingham. Thank you. I represent um, the towns of Oxford, Otisfield, and Mechanic Falls, also over in beautiful Western Maine near my Senate neighbor. Thank you. Good to see you this morning. Representative Millette. Sorry, I'm Solon Millet, uh, House District 71, towns of Norway, Sweden, Waterford, and West Paris, also in Western Maine. Western Maine is well represented this morning. Representative O'Neill. Good morning. My name is Maggie O'Neill, and I'm here representing House District 15, which is in Saka. And Representative Stover. Good morning. My name is Holly Stover. I represent House District 89, including the six coastal towns of Booth Bay, Booth Bay Harbor, Southport, Edgecombe, Westport Island, and part of South Bristol. And with us this morning, we also have our committee clerk, Ada Connors, and the OPEGA director, Lucia Nixon. Thank you, everyone, for being here. You, you forgot to introduce me. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you come on screen. I was looking at my notes. Representative Arada. That's okay. Um, my name is Amy Arada, and I represent House District 65, which includes New Gloucester and part of Poland. Thank you. And now we'll proceed to a summary of our meeting minutes from February 26, 2021. The summary of the February 26 GOC meeting has been prepared and was distributed to members for review. Is everyone in acceptance of the meeting summary? Seeing no opposition, I will move on. For new business today, we have two items related to the review of tax expenditures. First, Director Nick. First, Director Nixon will provide us with an overview of the tax expenditure review statute and process. Then we will take up the annual review of tax expenditure review category assignments and schedule. Director Nixon, we are ready for your presentation. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to um, screen share a short um, PowerPoint presentation with you this morning. 
We've also emailed you um, a, a handout with the slides if you um, want that for your reference now or later. And I would also note that in your GOC notebooks in the back section of reference materials under tab A is the GOC statute. And starting on page seven is section 998. And this overview is really a high level overview of the sections of statute um, starting with 998 on page seven. So if you want that to look at, um, you can look there as well. So let me go ahead and start the screen share. Could someone confirm that you can see? Awesome. We can. Okay, super. Okay, so this is just an introduction that what we're gonna do today is give you an overview of the tax expenditure review process. Um, this is something that is um, one of OPEGA's uh, key functions in addition to the program reviews that we do on other you know, state agencies and um, so first, I just wanted to orient everyone. I know some of you, this is um, something you're very familiar with and other people are new to the committee um, or maybe we can all use a refresher from time to time. So briefly, um, what, are we, what do we mean when we say tax expenditure? And there is a statutory definition um, that, that we rely on, which is that tax expenditures are state tax revenue losses that we can attribute to provisions in the tax law that allow a special exclusion, an exemption, or a deduction, or provide a special credit, a preferential rate of tax, or a deferral of tax liability. So these produce revenue losses, and in that way, um, they are referred to as tax expenditures. So the history and context briefly um, when OPEGA was first formed, the task of the office was focused on the program review side, um, performance audits and other analysis and evaluation of state programs. However, in 2015, the legislature enacted a new law focused on improving tax expenditure transparency and accountability. And under this law, um, assigned the GOC with support from OPEGA and the taxation committee certain functions related to tax expenditures. And specifically what the law requires is that the GOC, that being you, all of you, to organize and schedule tax expenditure reviews for OPEGA to conduct what we call full evaluation reviews. And I'll describe that a little bit more as we go on today. And then for the, the policy committee, the taxation committee to conduct what we call expedited reviews. So there's two levels of reviews and um, different, um, different responsibilities for who conducts those. So briefly, at a high level, the process for the review of tax expenditures, what are the GOC's responsibilities? So your responsibilities were, um, were and are assigning a review category for each tax expenditure in the state law. So at the outset, OPEGA work to catalog all the tax expenditures in state law and develop um, categorization. The GOC worked with that and have assigned review categories. And this is something we re review with you annually and also to incorporate changes in the law and new tax expenditures um, and so forth. So the three categories I mentioned before, well, there's two for review, a full evaluation and an expedited review. And I'll describe each of those shortly. And then some are actually categorized for no review. And so the GOC also, in addition to assigning what category each expenditure should go in, has the responsibility to establish a prioritized schedule for conducting these reviews. And then, as I mentioned, annually reviewing and adjustments to this assignments and schedule. And that's something we're gonna take up just after this presentation. And then also to consult and communicate with the taxation committee on the assignments and schedule. So next, short, a short introduction to what, a full, what we mean in the full evaluation. Um, so this is conducted by OPEGA, as I mentioned. 
and it is reserved for those tax expenditures that provide an incentive for a specific behavior or provide a benefit to a specific group or has measurable goals. So to qualify for a full evaluation, which is more in-depth and comprehensive, um, there's a need to meet one of these criteria. And then under the full evaluation, the task of the GOC um, at the outset is to, um, with recommendations from OPEGA and input from the taxation committee and interested stakeholders, the GOC approves what we call parameters and these are outlined in statute. So when we get to a new tax expenditure evaluation, um, the GOC approves the purpose, intents, and goals of the expenditure, the intended be beneficiaries, the evaluation objectives. So what are we gonna learn through this evaluation? And then the measures um, by which we are going to um, assess the outcomes. And as I mentioned, OPEGA provides framework and recommendations um, based on research that we do into the tax expenditure to, to frame this out. And then um, there's opportunities for input from tax and stakeholders. And then when OPEGA finishes a report that goes to both the GOC and is also delivered to the taxation committee. So these are the most comprehensive reviews and they're called full evaluations. The next level is the what we call expedited review of tax expenditures, and these are conducted by the taxation committee. OPEGA does have a role, but the actual review responsibility is with the tax committee. These are tax expenditures that, um, in contrast to those under the full evaluation, these are intended to implement broad tax policy goals. And with each of these expedited reviews, the task is for, and this is carried out by the tax committee, is to assess the continued rele relevance of or need for adjustments to the broad tax policy. And we'll, I'll give you some, we'll see some examples of those as we get into the next part of our work today. Um, and also to assess the individual expenditures that are assigned to that policy area. So the way this works is that OPEGA gathers summary information to support the review and submits that to the taxation committee. And then the taxation committee performs the review and reports the results to the legislature. Finally, uh, just a quick uh, recap of what the review activity has been in um, the years since this was established in 2015. On the expedited review category side, the taxation committee um, has completed five policy areas. This set of reviews is organized into seven policy areas in a six year cycle. So it's a little bit, doesn't match quite year to year, but um, they are spread out over six years. So this is the sixth year. And this year tax will be taking up the remaining two tax policy areas for the first cycle of reviews, at which point the cycle We'll re restart and we'll start our second round of reviews of these policy areas. On the full evaluation side, OPEGA has completed full evaluations of six tax expenditures. We have in progress full evaluations of three tax expenditures. And we also would note that we completed limited scope or follow-up reviews on two of the tax expenditures. So this is um, related to a full evaluation, the GOC directed um, a limited scope work or follow-up work. And so we have two of those completed, um, including just for reference, the Pine Tree Zone Development Report that you recently had your um, public comment and work session. That was a limited scope um, follow-up after the full evaluation of the Pine Tree Development Zones. So that is my uh, very high level overview to hopefully orient you all um, to the work of tax expenditure review and um, happy to take any questions at this point. And as I mentioned, the next item on your agenda when we're ready to switch to that will be for the, um, for the committee to do the annual um, review of the categorization and the schedule.
Thank you, Director. And I see that Senator Timberlake has joined us. Would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, you're on mute, Senator. You know, someday I'll learn this mute thing. Uh, and good morning, everyone. That's how I started off a few minutes ago. Uh, hi, I'm Jeff, I'm Senator Jeff Timberlake. I represent District 22 in Androscoggin and Kennebec County. Thank you for being here this morning. I know it was a late night for everybody. Does anyone have any questions for Director Nixon? Seeing none, if you'd like to proceed with the next part of your presentation, we would appreciate that. Thank you. Sure. And I would like to introduce Ariel Ritchie from OPEGA, who is here with me to um, cover this part of the agenda. So this is your annual task to review and make any necessary adjustments to the assignments of tax expenditures to the categories, um, the full evaluation category, the expedited review category, and the no review category. Um, we do have a series of um, materials that were sent to you in advance of the meeting. They're behind tab two in um, the materials that you received um, from ETA and also electronically. In those materials, we have a, a memo that I prepared that provides an overview of this task and um, includes a copy of the, the guiding statute. And then in addition, you will find in that set of materials uh, a series of tables that um, Ariel Ritchie will um, help us walk through, which gives you more details on the actual um, expenditures and proposed adjustments. So um, at a very high level, and then I'm going to turn it over to Ariel, but um, what we're going to look at today are proposed adjustments to the review category assignments. And we do have um, some pr proposed adjustments under um, each full evaluation, expedited review, and no review. And a lot of this is looking at newly enacted um, tax expenditures and how to work them into the framework that we have. And um, we have then also provided for you the outline of the prioritized schedule for expedited reviews and for full evaluations that incorporate the adjustments to the categories. And we invite the committee to consider the proposed adjustments to the category assignments and the, um, whether you want to make any adjustments to the prioritized schedule. The process then will be um, if, if, an, if the GOC proceeds to approve um, a set of, approve the adjustments and schedule with or without modifications, the next step will be uh, for communication to the taxation committee, which traditionally has been done by uh, the director, myself, um, communicating with the tax um, taxation committee through their analyst, Julie Jones, and um, providing what the GOC has, has approved, and then giving that taxation the opportunity to review it themselves and consider whether they have any changes. Um, and so typically, I think that's pretty run pretty smoothly. So that's how we will proceed today. So if there aren't any questions at this juncture, um, I would like to turn it over to Ariel to um, start walking us through the um, proposed adjustments and schedule. Seeing none, please proceed. Oh. Good morning. Um, I'm Ariel Ritchie. I'm an analyst here at OPEGA. And as um, Director Nixon explained, I'm going to walk you through the process, um, which is an annual process for the committee to review the category assignments and the schedule for tax expenditures. And just to recap, um, it is the GOC's responsibility to maintain what we describe as the universe of tax expenditures <clears throat> for review and which category those should be in. Um, and as you heard, the review categories are category A, a full evaluation by OPEGA, category, <clears throat> pardon me, category B, an expedited review, which is conducted by the taxation committee or category C, which is no review. 
Um, and then the GOC is also responsible for maintaining the schedule, which in effect is a prioritized list that sets out the order of reviews. So each year the in this annual process, the committee builds on the work of previous committees by considering whether any changes should be made uh, <clears throat> going forward. In particular, uh, a focus of that is incorporating newly enacted tax expenditures um, or any tax expenditures that have been amended such that indicates a change to the category should take place or those that have been repealed and um, perhaps should be removed. So what we're looking at today are changes um, that have resulted from st statutory changes in 2020. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through the documents using screen share, if I can just set this up. Um, is there a table appearing on the screen now? There is. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> So these are the same documents that you have received, um, I believe electronically and in hard copy. The first document are what we call the proposed adjustments to the category assignment. So <clears throat> what we do is we review various sources to catalog new repealed or modified tax expenditures um, arising from changes in statute in 2020. And we also look at uh, changes in revenue loss estimates from the Maine Revenue Service Main State Tax Expenditure Report, um, which is often referred to as the Red Book. So in 2020, there were some tax new tax expenditures that were enacted uh, and some were repealed. There weren't any changes that indicated um, that there should be a change from one category to another. So this is our proposal for the changes. And um, <clears throat> what we can see here, the first item there that's highlighted, recommended ch changes to category A, full evaluation, biopega. We have one newly enacted credit that appeared to us that it would um, warrant a full review. That's a new credit for affordable housing. And just for background, at this stage, we aren't delving into these expenditures in any more detail than looking at the high level, what is it, what are the um, revenue loss estimates and what appears to be the tax policy goal. Um, so that, that those more detailed questions would come later when we're actually conducting a review. At this stage, we're just looking at where do the expenditures fit in the schedule? Um, and this appeared to us to um, warrant a full evaluation um, because it is something that does have a, a clear policy goal. Um, so our proposal is that that gets amended, uh, added to the category A schedule. And in a moment, when we look at that schedule, I'll show you where that fits in. Looking at the recommended changes to whoops, category B, the expedited review by the taxation committee. Um, the first line here um, is, this was actually um, a tax expenditure that in its enacting statute, it also included <clears throat> a repeal date, which became effective um, at the end of 2019. So although it isn't a recent change, that repeal has become, effect, um, become effective and we are proposing that that tax expenditure be removed from category B. The second and third lines, nonprofit youth camps and nonprofit worldwide charitable organizations, those are sales tax exemptions. Those are new enactments um, and those very much fit within other sales tax exemptions that are um, subject of expedited review. And so we're proposing that those get slotted in to the relevant place in the expedited review schedule. And I'll show you where they appear in a moment. And then finally, um, there were a number of <clears throat> new enacted expenditures that appeared to us to 
fit into category C, no review. Um, and that is really because either there um, are no estimates available or the, fi the fiscal estimates available are relatively low and under that $50,000 threshold. Um, that's something that in this annual process we keep an eye on and if there are changes in those then um, we would be looking at and recommending to the committee in the future a change from one from the no review to another review category if appropriate. So that takes you through the proposed changes um, as a result of the additions um, and repeals from statutes. Before I move on to the next document, are there any questions about those proposed changes? I think then, um, and feel free to jump in with questions at any time. I'll then move on to the second document. This is um, the list of the expedited reviews that take place um, by the taxation committee. And for those that are new to the committee, though the, with the expedited reviews, there are a number, uh, there are many expenditures that in effect get grouped together um, by their broad tax policy goal. And then they all get reviewed together by the taxation committee. Rather than give you the big long list of all of the individual expenditures, um, we have this list simply shows the schedule going forward for each of the groupings. And I've noted in, um, as Director Nixon mentioned, this year, 2021, is the last um, grouping um, of the first full cycle. So this year, there will be an evaluation of um, a number of smaller expenditures that the tax policy goal appears to be conformity with the Internal Revenue Code and exemptions for inputs to tangible products. And, and what you can see in the right-hand column here is the removed, the proposed removed expenditure would come out of this category. Um, so that would not be included. We've also listed here for reference, um, the future evaluations as this year concludes, it will then restart with a new cycle um, of each of these areas. Uh, and if those changes that we walked through a moment ago about um, the category B changes are accepted, this is where you would see um, the additions in the 2024 and 2025 in the charitable exemptions grouping. Um, so once that cycle is completed, the cycle will start again next year. Um, and I'll just pause and check to see if there's any questions before moving on to the full review. So if I may for a moment, I see that Senator Vitelli has joined us. Would you like to introduce yourself, Senator? Yes, good morning. I'm Senator Eloise Vitelli representing Senate District 23, which is all of Saginaw County and Dresden and Lincoln County. And I'm working on getting a better internet connection. Thank you and good morning. Okay, I will move on then to the third document in your pack, which lists Oh, excuse me. I oh. do see a question from Representative Dillingham. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt much. you. No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't get my hand up fast enough. <laughs> Ariel, could I, could you bring that prior screen back just real quick? This one here? Yes. Thank you. Got it. Okay, and, and if anyone needs um, me to flip around at any time, please just let me know. Um, so the third document, this is the list of full reviews, um, the category A full reviews that are either in progress or in the future, and at the end we have those completed. So at the start here in the green, we have 
um, those that are in progress. Uh, and as you can see, we have the main seed capital tax credit that is in progress in field work that's due to be reported out um, in late summer, later this year. Uh, we also have the credit for rehabilitation of historic properties and the research expense tax credit. Those are both in preliminary research and they are due to have their evaluation parameters presented to you um, by the end of April with the credit for rehabilitation of historic properties um, being the priority of the two of those. And then this is the list of the, oops, the future evaluations. So these are grouped together by broad tax policy goals and they appear in priority order as set by previous committees. So here you can see policy group and the tax policy goal, business incentive, targeted industry. Um, and I have included, there are a number of groupings that you can see there. And I'll just show you where the new, newly enacted <clears throat> credit for affordable housing appears a bit later down um, and under the sp um, specific policy goal or mandate. What we also have is um, at the end of this list, a list of completed reviews and the report and the year of report. So similar to the expedited, the full evaluations are intended to operate on a cycle so that when all of the full evaluations have been completed, the new cycle starts at the beginning. Um, that is the intention, although um, as, as you know, we, there, there are a lot of them. So um, it, it will be more years than the, than the six year cycle for the expedited. So this is really just to give you a sense of what will be coming up. Um, if there is interest by the committee in moving a policy group um, of the, from the future evaluation section or an individual expenditure to a higher priority than they currently are, that can be done through a motion. If there's no desire to change the priority list, um, that is also fine. Then the only motion required is whether to accept the proposed changes that insert and repeal uh, insert and remove the repealed um, new tax expenditures. So are there any questions that I can assist with either about the full review schedule and where things sit and lie or about the process generally? Um, I believe Representative Dillingham has a question. Thank you. So I noticed on the affordable housing um, one, the one that you are proposing, that you are actually, um, you bumped that up ahead of a few others. And so I was just looking for an explanation of, of placement. So the um, rationale for placement is that it is in, it, it's not so much that new ones go to the bottom of the list. The intention is, is that um, those that are within a similar grouping um, and, and the groupings were, were set by a um, government oversight committee several sessions ago that we try and keep them together um, so that they can roughly be considered together. That doesn't mean that that is strictly necessary if the committee feels like they want, that there is flexibility in saying, um, for instance, if there was an interest in air and water pollution control facilities being considered before that, those are changes that can be made. But um, bearing in mind how far down the list it is, um, it's probably going to be a little while before we get there. Um, but that gives you a bit of sense of the rationale about why we try to group them together rather than just adding it on to the end of the list. 
Thank you very much. Are there any additional questions or discussion? Seeing none, would anybody like to make a motion to accept these or any motion that you would like, but for example, to approve the adjustments to the review category assignments and the schedule for tax expenditure evaluations for 2021 as presented by OPEGA? So move. So move. I'll second. <laughs> And I will turn this over to Etta to record that vote and take a roll call, please. Etta, you're muted, I think. It appears your headset might not be working. Hold on just one moment. It looks like the director may have gone to assist. You're not on mute, so it appears the issue may be with your headset. Thank you for your patience. Um, we're having technical difficulties. Um, so if it's okay, um, Representative McDonald, I could call the roll. Yes, please, thank you. Sure, <laughs> thank you. Um, Senator Bailey? Yes. Senator Bailey, yes. Senator Vitelli? Yes. Senator Vitelli, yes. Senator Kime, absent. Senator Timberlake? Yes. Senator Timberlake, yes. Senator Bennett? Yes. Senator Bennett, yes. Representative McDonald? Yes. Representative McDonald, yes. Representative O'Neill? Yes. Representative O'Neill, yes. Representative Stover? Yes. Representative Stover, yes. Representative Dillingham? Yes. Representative Dillingham, yes. Representative Millett? Yes. Representative Millett, yes. yes. Representative Arada? Yes. Representative Arada, yes. Is unanimous of the members present? 10 members present, two absent. Thank you. Moving on to unfinished business, there is a request pending for review of the Wild Blueberry Commission. It's on hold pending a response from Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry. We have sent a letter to AFC requesting input and a report back to GOC by March 26, 2021. And now we'll move on to a report from our director, Director Nixon, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, this will be pretty quick. Um, so in terms of the status of projects, and reviews. There's um, no change since the, since the detailed overview I gave you two weeks ago. And also in two weeks, um, which we'll get to, is when you're going to do a real um, in-depth review of the work plan and projects. So um, we don't have any significant milestones or changes um, in our projects in the last two weeks. As for follow-up from the last several meetings, as Representative McDonald mentioned, we sent a letter to the ACF committee and have requested a report back um, by March 26th. Uh, we also, uh, you've sent letters to the, um, regarding the main commission on indigent legal services project, a letter to the commission to formalize your request for quarterly report backs to the GOC for the balance of the 130th legislature. And also a letter from the chairs to the state auditor requesting a meeting 
to discuss any possible resources that the um, state auditor could bring to bear. Um, there on Pine Tree Development Zone report, where you had the public hearing and work session at your last meeting, there's now been a letter sent to the um, Department of Economic and Community Development with a copy to Maine Revenue Services and the appropriate policy committees outlining four questions that you had for DECD and requesting answers by April 12th. As for um, additional items, I just wanted to note that um, the OPEGA annual report, which is something that the office provides as a summary of activities and just a recap of what the office has done. Um, regrettably, these have not been submitted to you for um, 2019 or 2020, um, but I have noticed that and we're on track to get those to you as soon as possible and intend to submit um, a catch up report for 2019 and 2020 by the end of March. So the end of this month. And um, our key activities in the next two weeks, preparing for your next meeting, will be getting those annual reports completed and submitted, um, preparing for a presentation of the OPECA budget to you, which is something we do annually, and also uh, focusing on preparing a draft um, biennial work plan for 2021-22 of the reviews and projects and for your consideration and deliberation at the next meeting. And as part of that, we'll be developing um, status updates on where all the projects stand um, to give you the information that you need to set your priorities and prioritize items. That's what I have for you today. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions or discussion about the director's report? All right, moving right uh, along here. Oh, sorry. Madam Chair, Madam Chair. Yes. yes. Could, I, could I pose a question through you to Director Nixon? Uh, in regard to a, a request that was submitted on March 4th by uh, Representative Justin Fecto of Augusta requesting a GOC overview of the Workday uh, system project within DAPS. I just wanted to know if it had been received uh, by the staff and if so, when it might appear on our agenda for future consideration. Yes, you certainly may direct that question for me and I'm happy to respond to it as well. Director Nixon? Sure, I would just say that yes, a copy was provided to staff and that it is the discretion of the chairs, um, this, working with the chairs on scheduling that, um, there's a need to gather information. We have the whole review process, but getting it on a meeting is something, um, I'll let Representative McDonald address that. Sure, um, so these are serious allegations and at this moment, I'm personally lacking any actionable details. There has not been an opportunity to discuss this at length yet. The AG's office and DAFs are both in the early stages of their investigation as well. And that may produce new information. Um, before diving into this, Rep Representative Fecto's request should be on a printed agenda with support materials included so that we can all review this ahead of time. I'm certainly happy to schedule that opportunity. I will wait until my Senate co-chair is also in the meeting if uh, folks don't mind if we could take this up at our next government oversight meeting I would be more comfortable with that. Thank you Madam Chair I was just curious as to whether it had been received in a timely fashion so thank you. It has yes. All right seeing no other questions or discussion I'm going to move along to planning for upcoming meetings. Director Nixon covered some of this but just to reiterate as of now, we have the following items on deck for upcoming meetings. Uh, presentation and approval of the OPEGA budget is planned for 326. Presentation and approval of the annual work plan is planned for 326. And the MCILS part one report back on data assessment request has been requested by government oversight on 212.21. Does anyone have any questions or discussion? All right, moving along so we can all go back to coffee and sleep. The next meeting date has been scheduled for March 26, 2021, and I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I see a second? Second. Second. All right. Nice to see everybody. Have a great rest of your day and a fantastic weekend. Take care. Thank you.